So let's just go through mm. where we're at, starting with the Fremantle Union, which is a term when we last talked hadn't been invented. Yeah, that's right. And this is a, a really interesting initiative and one that partly come through Stuart Hicks so, um, and through the city realising that we can't make some of these projects happen unless we have the state on site and the key agencies, Department of Transport, Department of Planning, Public Transport Authority and, and Fremantle Ports. If they were, it's just ultimately they're collaborative projects that need collaborative outcomes. The Director Generals of each of those agencies will actually be sitting down with this, the city on a regular basis to work through planning for those projects. Oh, I hadn't realised that. Mm. Well, that's a, that's a massive coup. Yeah. So really strong. Strong group, we've already met once. They were really enthusiastic about this approach to planning. I think that they wanted something that was a bit more agile and a bit more um, less bureaucratic than, than a formal alliance model. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Good, and having Stuart Hicks there is just an absolute coup. Yeah, absolutely. He's got the reputation, he's got the way of working about bringing people together, finding that consensus, getting those win-wins that, that have kind of been staring us in the face for a long time. I mean, for me, the train station one is the absolute classic. You've got this train station sitting by itself in this sea of nothing, sea of car parks, and should be integrated with the water, with the port, with the, with the city, and it just hasn't. And, for, and we can do some great planning around that to get a really good outcome, I reckon. Mm. I think we've got to keep pushing that message out, out there that yeah, things have changed, and, and not only are we changing our planning scheme, but the way we work is also changing. Yeah, OK, so that's... Uh it's a big step forward. The focus on the city centre will be an important part of that, but the city centre does depend on its region uh, to a large degree. The transport links and how Fremantle plays out in those is going to be key, actually. Um, and, yes, yes. And, and transport is, uh, uh, you know, on the agenda. We've got Brian McMahon's study going on and so on, but. It, it, it does need to be a bigger picture which shows yeah, bus routes and, and a, you know, a good light rail link into oh, the city. Absolutely, and if we don't link properly with Coburn Coast and don't link properly with all of those regions, yeah. then I mean, Fremantle will continue to struggle. I mean, this is, yeah. It's a really key point. And I mean, to be honest with you as well, the roads as well, the way we're currently approaching even our road network is about diverting around Frio. Everything's a, by a bypass because it seemed to be too hard to get traffic in and out of Frio. Yeah. And all of a sudden you find that these, you know, we're going to be this little island that's going to have everything going around us yeah. and nothing actually coming to us. Now the development projects uh, which are critical to achieving this central city revival, um, perhaps you could run through them quickly, the, the three main ones. So um, since we last spoke, I think it's now the east end, or the outer east as we're now calling it, has been gazetted by the minister and now that's planning law. So. Um, Really, now we have to work with the landowners in that area to encourage them to actually put in um, development applications. And the global financial environment is not the most conducive to that at the moment. But, but is um, there interest? Oh, certainly, there's interest. And um, I mean, I guess there's a little bit of land banking going on as well on those kinds of things. Yeah, but um, and um, there'll be some, there's already some shifts going on in some of the property ownership. So, I mean, I, I mean obviously, I'd like to see something sooner rather than later. Um, Although, again, Fort Knox is looking good as a, as a major redevelopment project. That's back on, on, on track, apparently. As a way of kicking that off, we've actually started some major street-level urban upgrades around changing the, the streets in that area, putting in bike lanes, proper parking, narrowing it down to one lane in each direction, putting in street trees and street furniture as a way of actually saying, this is going to be a new destination for our city. It's going to be where we're going to have a couple of thousand people living. It shouldn't just be a, a road that you pass through. But we're into a new controversial into a new, more controversial area around the city sites. That's coming to council tonight, actually, um, for the initiation of that scheme amendment. But the, currently, it's two to four storeys, depending on the site, with possibly a fifth setback. This will be four to seven, some sites up to nine. Yeah, well, it's going to need that to get people interested mm. in investing. Uh, it is central city. But it's amazing the pushback you get still. You know, I mean, I've been <laughs> getting an extraordinary amount of you know, I mean, there's an hysterical response. I mean, including from the local papers. I mean, and well, the Herald primarily. Yeah. You know, just this kind of like, the world's about to come to an end. What's council doing? They're going to destroy Fremantle forever. Yeah. And I'm actually thinking, are we being ambitious enough? Mm. <laughs> you, know, that's, you know, that's the reality. Are we doing enough to turn it around? Absolutely. I mean, this is an opportunity to create some heritage buildings, which, which they aren't at the yeah. moment. No. I think that is a message that uh, Andrew and others 
say. Yeah, and we did try and actually go beyond the nine. I mean, we're not necessarily beyond, but we tried to say, let's just don't put caps on. Let's just talk about quality. And of course, that yeah, we just unfortunately yeah, some conversations you can have in free, and yeah. some you can't. <laughs> and yeah, and I think that, that 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 was a conversation I wish we could have had. Yeah, with my political hat on, I was like, we're about to come to a mid-term local government election, and mm. I need a council I can work with for the next two years, not one that's uh, yeah, that's right. That's been elected on hysteria. And it was a pretty disappointing and inaccurate coverage of yeah. you know, some complicated things we're trying to do, which of course they like to set up as a very black and white issue between horrible, greedy developers and, uh, you know, and, the, and those who saved Fremantle. So then it's a challenge, you're going to have to work around them. You know, and this is, it makes it just that a little bit harder because the space for sensible debate for getting through those issues is, is not going to happen. So then you think, okay, well, how else do you do it? Mm. And can you? I just hope that the public's smart enough to realise this and not to buy into it, and then we get this backlash mm. against something that's not even there. Yeah. And, that's, and that's a real challenge. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think it really is trying to make it clear to people, to friend of people, there's a choice. I mean, about what kind of city we want to be. Look, I mean, it is a choice to simply let your population continue to flatline, let your retail continue to decline, and your jobs decline, and then you become a, a weekend tourist town where people come for a nice visit on during, you know, during the summer on the weekends, but the rest of the time it's, it's pretty well empty, you know, and that's, that's a choice, you know, you can choose that and that's, but for me, that's not what Frio is for me. But it's going to be really interesting to see how this goes. I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that tonight we'll get that scheme amendment up and debated, but then that's, that's the start of a five or six month process in terms of as you, I mean, the, the public advertising period is only about two months, but, um, but you still got to have that very strong debate. And I, I want it to be a really open debate. My view is the more people know, the more they'll support what we're doing. And, and I think that's, that's going to be one of the key things. And in fact, one of the things I would like, I'm going to arrange, and you, if you're around, it'd be great to have you participate in, is actually talking about um, some series of town hall meetings mm -hmm. where we actually get experts in to talk about why we need to do our cities differently and how they need to be for the 21st century. So that, that's my, that's, that's we're actually trying to educate people and, and get them to understand what we're doing. And that's the street one we got to. Yes. Um, slowly, as is, Often things with Landcore do seem to go a bit more slowly than we'd like. Um, we had, had some good meetings with Landcore around that, around actually um, what they're doing. I mean, I think there is a little bit of uh, reluctance, and it's part of the challenge, to be honest with you, about working with uh, under a Liberal government where they're not really that interested in pushing the boundaries. It's about, oh, let's just, you know. I mean, to be honest with you, they've been pretty good on the affordable housing end of the spectrum, about diverse housing and affordable housing, but Sustainability is just not on their radar. Mm. So when you try and put that in the mix as well, like, oh, you know, you can't put everything in this development. That's the planning agenda and the development agenda yeah, and the transport right. agenda. Uh, um. That's a lot of it. I mean, I guess, I mean, maybe just a personal twist, because, I mean, I guess the personal life's kind of a bit of a yeah. part of this. And, um, I mean, I guess it will be interesting to say, I mean, it will influence what happens for me over the next few months is that my dad got diagnosed with terminal cancer last week. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he was going to have an operation on the first and um, they cancelled it because it's not, it. it's not worth it, yeah. So, yeah, so that's kind of been really sad. I mean, I found that a week ago, so I'm kind of feeling a bit more, you know, accept, accepting of it now. Mm. But, um, yeah, so it's going to, look, and he, he might only have a few months to live, so it's going to be, you know, I guess that's that real challenge and I guess that's, you know, it brings a lot of things to the fore around work-life balance, you know, because, well, I mean, I love what I do, but that's, yeah, I've probably spent way too much time here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you have know. a very good excuse not to be here. Yeah. That is part of the journey, uh, I'm afraid. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, in, in a way, it will bring out the best in your colleagues who will now need to do more. Yeah, that's right. And you will need to, to give up on some things to Yeah, that's to right. Happen. Yeah, and that, that's kind of good for me, actually, to learn to delegate a bit more and to... To say, hey, no, to trust you guys to run with this. This is not a mm. one-man show. We can, mm. yeah. And I'm lucky I've got the council. I can yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. When you go through that, I guess the hysteria and the overreaction. <laughs> she puts everything in perspective. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, you just like look. Yeah, it's funny how it just put. Actually, it's a very calming influence in some kind of strange way. It's like, you know what? It's just this just does, doesn't matter that much, and you can jump up and down as much as you like, but. <laughs> If it, seeing seeing challenges as opportunities. Exactly, yeah. and, and even yeah. this opposition of politics, you know, is so outmoded on what you represented. It's something, mm. it's something to do with that. It's something to do with that.
collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Clients. Yeah. People looking for. I think that's where you get where you get outcomes. Yeah. That's. I mean, yeah. It's that, it's that confidence also that says that what we're talking about here is the right way to go. And yeah. the more you explain it, the more you bring people with you. It's actually believing in what you're doing.